Hey there. Ah, some mornings I just feel like that. Happy day, Pajama Grandma, Sharon horn from here. But you can call me Pajama Grandma, of course. If you haven't met me or seen me or been exposed to me yet, go ahead and put hashtag pajama in the comments below. Today is day 221 of doing something every day that scares me or scares us or stretches my comfort zone. I hope that you're doing it along with me because today is day 221, 220 days already. I have done something. Sometimes it's a big thing. Sometimes it's a little thing. Sometimes it's super scary. Other times it's just a teeny bit scary and a little bit of a stretch. But always, every day, I've been doing something. And I guarantee you that I'm an entirely different person when it comes to stretching my comfort zone, doing things I never thought that I would do, trying things I never thought I would try, than I was 200 days ago. Because maybe there's two days I wasn't awesome at it. So, day 221, another one of those dreaded blank line days. And all it says is, magnifying glass, today's deed. So, when I am faced with these days, I learned pretty early on in the book because they pop up about every other week. They pop up where there's two days in a row and it's just blank lines and we have to come up with our own comfort zone stretching activity or thought process. So yesterday I shared that I go to my card decks and we went through a couple of cards. That's one of my strategies. Another strategy I have for looking for ways to stretch my comfort zone is I think about something that's been popping up in my life or that I've been noticing or seeing. And the word victim has been coming up in, in conversations, in coaching calls, in conversations, and maybe people aren't saying that they're a victim, but they're making a lot of excuses for not taking action. And to me, that's because there's something going on in their life that they feel out of control in, which is kind of a victim behavior. So I went to my handy dandy 5,000 quotations for all occasions book that my grandfather, I got from my grandfather when he passed away, and he paid $1.20 for this book. So I was thinking, I wonder how old these quotes are. Well, this book was copywritten in 1945. So are the things valid? Are the points valid? Are the sayings and the quotes valid today? Absolutely, of course they are. Are they a little dated sometimes versus our modern definition of things? It, it depends. Yes, yes, they are, because we don't talk a lot about victory and well, I guess we probably do. What am I talking about? We've had more wars since 1945 than we had before 1945, so I might be wrong about that. But I, was wa I wanted to look up the word victim and see if there were any quotes about victims. Of course, there aren't. I think, I think being a victim has become much more popular and much more common in today's society than it ever was back in the 40s, even though it was right coming out of the, end, the Great Depression and it was around the time of the world wars, I still think that there are more, there's more emphasis on being a victim or there's more people being victims now than there ever were then. And before we get into a discussion of, oh, that's because the population's bigger, my point is I think that people tend to take the victim approach more than the proactive approach of controlling their lives than they ever did in the past. So I, I pulled up a couple of quotes, grabbed my handy dandy magnifying glass, and these are about victory because, of course, there's no victim in this book, which is why I'm ranting about the, the increase in victimhood. So victories that are cheap are cheap. Those only are worth having which come as the result of hard fighting. Now, what this says to me, and you can interpret it any way you want, is that we need to work for and put effort into what it is that we want. We aren't going to get a lot out of our lives if we only just go with the, you know, if we only just let life flim flam and, and slap us around like a fish in the face. If we don't make decisions and choices for ourselves or take action toward what it is that we want, we are going to just have to settle for whatever comes our way. Now, is that being victorious or is that living the life of a victim? And don't get me wrong, all of us live both roles. I've, been a, I've acted and lived like a victim for lots of type, times in my life, for lots of times when, and by victim, I, I say I am just not paying attention. I'm, I just discovered there's areas of my life right now that I have not been paying attention to. And to me, that's sort of 
being a victim. That's just not making decisions, not making choices, and letting whatever happens happen around me. That lack of initiative, that cheap way of behaving leads to results that I maybe don't want in certain areas of my life. That's what I mean by playing a victim or being a victim. Now, there's, of course, victims of crimes. I'm not talking about that. There are, there's evil in the world. Bad people hurt other people. Those are victims, too. But I'm not talking about that type of victim today because those things are outside of our control sometimes. Sometimes you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time, and bad things happen. And, you know, I don't know, I don't know if this is a newsflash to y'all, but bad things happen in all of our lives. I don't think any life worth living has ever existed where somebody was born, lived their entire life, and nothing that any, another person could interpret as bad has ever happened to them. It's how we face what happens to us that determines if it's a bad or good situation. And it's, it's so much impacted by our perspective, as is whether we're taking a victim or a victor approach to anything in our life and everything in our life. Like I said, I'm like everybody else, I'm human. There are areas of my life that I'm just not paying attention to and I'm letting shit happen around me that isn't giving me the result I want. And it isn't until I notice that the result isn't what I want that I do something about it. And so the whole topic, I think why I'm noticing and hearing and seeing the whole topic of victim and victor come up is because there are areas of my life that I too need to pay attention to. So let's pick another one. I like this one too, and I don't know how to pronounce. Oh, that one was by Henry Ward Beecher. And this one says, how beautiful is victory, but how dear. Boofler, Boofler's, I have no idea. B-O-U-F-F-L-E-R-S. I'm sure it's a, sounds like a French name. Maybe it's a French writer, maybe it's a poet. I have no idea. And you know what? I'm not gonna look it up either because it's just not important. The saying is what's important. How beautiful is victory, but how dear. Which means when you're victorious, when you have a win, appreciate it. Be glad, be happy about it, and don't take it for granted. Don't take anything in our lives for granted. Think of it all as blessings, and remember to be grateful for it and, and appreciate it so that you can have more victories. And I believe, and you can argue with me if you like, because I'd love to have a conversation about it, I believe that Victory is our choice. Being a victor is our choice. It's our choice, and we choose it by being proactive, by making decisions, by taking action, by focusing on what we want, by moving toward what we want. All of those things can take us from being a victim to a victor, a snap of our fingers. So that's it today. That's kind of a rant, you know, because sometimes pajama grandma goes on a rant, especially if she gets a book from her very intelligent, very wise grandfather who hasn't been with us since... 1982, I think my grandfather passed away the week before my sister's wedding in 1982. And that was sad, but there was a happy event right after it. So, you know, again, victim or victor, you get to choose. You get to decide how absolutely everything that happens in your life is going to impact and affect you. And I'm not saying when bad things happen, don't feel what you feel based on that bad experience. Go ahead, feel it. But don't, don't decide to live there. How many people do we know that have had something bad happen to them and they never got over it? They, they chose to live there. They keep reliving that same bad event over and over and over again, maybe every day for the rest of their life or maybe every day for years. And the, the truth is we can't go around. We can't go back. We cannot change anything that has happened to us in the past or that we have done, said, or any way that we've behaved in the past. It just, it is what it is. It happened, and it doesn't even matter why it happened at this point. There's nothing we can do to change that. It doesn't mean we can't make amends if we've done something that's harmed or hurt other people, but it, we still can't ever take that back. We can't ever change what's happened. If we said something mean to someone and that was very hurtful and caused them pain, we can never take back what we said. We may be able to make reparations and, and do things to fix that hurt that we caused, but we still, it still happened. We can't take it back. So there I just used the word can't. I don't usually use the word can't very often. Somebody better mark that on their calendars. That's it. Have a fantastic day. Go ahead and find something. Find an experience in your life today 
where you can be the victor. Maybe notice somewhere where you're not taking action, where you're living passively and you're not taking control of your life and decide like I am today. Like I said, there's not, there's not just one. There's a couple areas of my life where I have just been an ass and I need to stop ignoring it and I need to step up, be who I am, own it, be proactive and take some action on it so that I get the results that I want instead of the results that are just kind of flimming in and flamming and coming my way because I don't want to live that way. I don't want to live in reactive mode ever. I want to live proactively and be moving toward what I want and I suspect you probably do too. That's it. Have a fantastic day. See you tomorrow.